greetings <clears throat> in the bonds of peace and welcome to Ani Ishai One. My name is Dr. Sean Lyon, a forever student of the divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley proved the fact on three ecclesiastical teaching issues to every religious organization and school of the highest learning around the world from 1958 to 1976. As a result of his divine vision and revelation, he transcribed this book, which we call God, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. This book was given to every school of the highest learning, every religious organization, every president elect, and every queen and king of the earth, along with a holy name virgin Bible. That was transliterated by A.B. Trainer, an Italian Hebrew with the true and correct name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his son. Yahweh is the name of the Father and Elohim is the divine title and Yahshua the Messiah is the name of the son. Within the inscription, Dr. Henry Clifford Kelly revealed to the world the threefold pattern Yahweh Elohim revealed to Moses on Mount Sinai in the year 1490. Here. And later commanded Moses to build one in the wilderness of Sinai which established the apothecary. This was revealed to John the Revelator on the Isthmus of Patmos that Yahshua, the Messiah, was the true Eloah, whom Yahweh sent into the world for the remission of sin by the operation of blood, water, and spirit. In John 1933-37, there's the record of John the Revelator, that when the centurion guard hears Yahshua the Messiah in his side, that forthwith came blood and in Hebrews 9, 14 through 15 revealed that Yahshua offered himself one time through his eternal spirit unto the Father to remove sin in the flesh through his death, his burial, his resurrection, ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on AD 33 through AD 40 unto the Gentile nation unto the present day in the kingdom age. This can be found on page 69 through 86 in volume one of the comparative analyst and apocalypse confirmation of the creation. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley also revealed in the same publication on page 129, volume one, entitled Yahweh, the all in all, that Yahweh Elohim is the substance, the limits, and the bound of all things and the all in all, and that's all. Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley gave us rules of engagement pertaining to his vision. 
that the manifestation will change, but the principle will remain the same. That being said, study to show thyself to be a fool, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And may the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, teach you all things. My aims and objectives are to help you find Yahshua, the Messiah, in your heart and in your mind. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-5. 1 Corinthians 6, 17-20. 2 Corinthians 3, 1-6. My second aim and objective is, is to show you how Yahweh wrote his laws in your inward parts. Jeremiah 31, 31, Hebrews 8, 10 to 13. My third aim and objective is, is to help you discern the sons of Elohim and the sons of the devil. 1 John, third chapter, 1 John 4, 1 to 10. My fourth aim and objective is to show and prove that Yahshua is the true Eloah whom Yahweh has sent. 1 John 5, 20, John 17, and 3. <clears throat> At this particular time, we will have a prayer, uh, our scripture reading, Announcements, script ascertainment and perception and direction exam. We will choose a speaker. We will have doxology, which is Romans, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 27. At this particular time, I will be giving you prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for an opportunity to give back of the things that you have shown me pertaining to your purpose, your pattern, and your plan. I humbly thank you, Heavenly Father, for all things, Heavenly Father. I ask, Heavenly Father, that in this time that you strengthen not only myself, your servant, but other heavenly father who believe in me and love me. I ask heavenly father that at this time, because of the world situation, things that are going on in the world, heavenly father, that you allow your words and your comfort to comfort us in this time. With these humble prayers, servant asks in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. I thank you. Hallelujah. And at this particular time, we will be having um, scripture reading, um, which will be um, Exodus, the um, 13th chapter. And I as well will be your scripture reader. I will be reading to you Exodus, the 13th chapter, out of the Holy Name Version Bible, critically compared with ancient authorities, various manuscripts devised by the late A.B. Trainer. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both man and a beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day, which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out 
in the month Abib. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of Canaanite and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep the service in this month, seven days, thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And in the seventh day shall be a feast unto Yahweh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt tell thy sons in that day, saying, this is because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand, Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in this season from year to year. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of beasts, which thou hast, the male shall be Yahweh's. Every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou will not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou shalt say unto him? By strength of hand, Yahweh brought us up out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man, the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to Yahweh all that opens the matrix being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thy hand and for front, frontlets between thine eyes. For by strength of hand Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For all, for Elohim said, that's pre-adventure, thy people repent. And when they see war, they return to Egypt. But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up, armed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him for he had straightly sworn by the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you. And ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkah and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. I have read to you Exodus, the 13th chapter.
we will have uh, announcements at this particular time. Um, I haven't had any uh, updates <clears throat> um, that can be announced based um, on uh, the previous brethren um, and their uh, their illnesses. May Yahweh be with them. Um, we're going to go forth um, and start with um, our uh, ecologies. Um, and our ecologies will start with um, our geography. Uh, it says that um, <clears throat> in uh, Fontana, California, reported a magnitude of a 4.0 earthquake. Friday at 4.18 a.m., 26 miles from Ukiah, California, and 41 miles from Clear Lake, 59 miles from Red Bluff, and 60 miles from Hillsburg and Chico. In the past 10 days, there has been an earthquake of magnitude of 3.0 or greater centered nearby. Now this is uh, one of the second third earthquakes that has happened uh, within that same vicinity. And that is uh, basically in the um, most holy place um, near the coast uh, of California. So that's the top part of the map in California. And it also has been shared that there is a volcano uh, on uh, Sukura Jima in Southwest Japan erupted Sunday morning at 1.09 a.m. It says there were no reports of injuries or property damage, said local authorities. This agency has maintained alerts for active volcanoes at, at level three or a five point scale warning. Uh, it says warning the public not to go near craters and urging caution against falling rocks and stones and pyroclastic um, flows beyond the uh, two kilometer radius. It says that uh, San Kurajima has one of the most active volcanoes in Japan connected to the uh, Osumi um, Peninsula uh, on uh, Ku Kushu, the country southwest of the mainland. Um, so, as well, it also states that um, in um, there was a uh, COVID outbreak uh, in Japan. It says that this is Japan's third state of emergency um, surge in COVID cases across the country. So this is um, the third time that they had a uh, COVID outbreak <clears throat> um, uh, in Japan. Okay. So now it also shows forth when we do all my geographies. Um, that um, it says that uh, a preliminary uh, 2.6 uh, magnitude um, earthquake struck Monday morning near Berkeley, um, that was this morning, according to the United uh, States um, Geological Survey, it says that the uh, quake centered about 20, a 2.6 uh, miles southeast of Berkeley about 4.45 a.m. It says no other immediate uh, information was reported. It also states that <coughs> Um, pertaining to a uh, volcano report that um, for over two weeks on the island of um, St. Vincent, 
um, has with um, unrelenting fury erupted. It's reported that residents don't even recognize their homes because the ash and the soot. And then it also says that um, pertaining to uh, our ecologies, um, and this is uh, pertaining to um, our uh, astrology. It says uh, that um, the lunar, a lunar cycle means that a full moon falls uh, slightly on a different day from a month to month. It says each lunar cycle uh, lasts just over um, 29.5 days. Um, the reason why that we were giving you this information, it says, because uh, a super moon will fill the sky tonight, I says, until early morning on April 27th. It says, followed by another super moon on May 26th. And then um, June 24th, which will be the final for the year. So we have these um, super moons and things of that particular nature uh, because they basically define um, the things that are pertaining to uh, this time of year. Um, and that's pertaining to uh, what we had just read pertaining to the first day of the year, pertaining to uh, what Yahweh had given unto the uh, children of Israel. So, at this particular time, what we will be doing is, is that we will be getting into um, uh, our lecture, and uh, we will see what uh, Yahweh will provide for us um, this evening. So, I will be your speaker for um, this evening's class, and um, Let's see what Yahweh has uh, for us um, <clears throat> this evening. So tonight, what we will be getting into this evening's class um, we're going to be picking up where we left off last last class. And so along with that, we're going to be sharing uh, the things pertaining to uh, what we just read and then the things basically what we have been going over. Um, I'm trying my best to give you a better uh, visual um, of what I'm trying to show you um, so that you can get an understanding of what's going on at this particular time, okay? Now, here, <clears throat> what you're looking at is um based upon what we had just basically read this is showing forth the uh sacred calendar of yahweh Elohim. and basically what this is revealing right here is the prophetic calendar and also the lunar calendar and so basically what we have done basically right here, we have drawn this all the way down here at the bottom portion of this particular chart to show you basically what we did was, was the, um, day by day sequence. We have wrote everything down pertaining to what was written with the scriptures when Yahweh Elohim was saying that this shall be the beginning of months and the beginning of year unto the children of Israel, okay? Leading all the way up until the time see that they came to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, see, which we understand that had manifested right here, okay? 
So what we're doing is, is giving you the time frame um, pertaining to when Yahweh Elohim had instructed the children of Israel to take out a lamb, see, uh, and the divine specifications, see, which happened on the 10th of April that was held over until the 14th. And so therefore, uh, when you understand how when Yahweh Elohim said to take out a lamb and to hold it over to the 10th and to the 14th, that this was a specification that he had that was aligning the children of Israel to be ready to come to and through the divided waters and come up out of the land of Egypt. So this time of year, see, it's very, very, very important to the Yahudah people and as well um, as Yahweh Elohim, because this was the establishment, see, of the first calendar and timetable, okay? So now, where we are uh, in time, that this is the, um, 26th day today, it's the 26th of April, okay? So this has us right here, uh on the um sacred calendar and it's showing forth that on the 26th of this particular which is this particular day it shows forth that based upon when we understand that yahweh elohim had told them to take out a lamb see right here on the 10th and to hold it over until the 14th and we're looking at these two uh particular dates right here see and we see how that we're 20 on the 26th day. We understand that on the 15th, that this was the time that Israel departs up out of the land of Egypt. And that's why we have a zero right here that's manifesting on the 15th day, okay? Because this is zero. Now this line that you see that's manifesting right down here, okay, is showing forth um, when the children of Israel departed up out of the land of Egypt, but this is also uh, what we call our Pentecost line. From here, it shows forth that from the 15th day after they went to and through the divided waters, which we will show you, see, uh, that's manifesting um, right here. Give me one second. That what we are trying to reveal is, is that here, that here, that when we come to uh, the 26th, which is today, that pertaining to when the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt, it puts us on the 11th day pertaining to when the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so the reason why that this is so, so significant is for the simple fact that we, um, as being Gentiles, we do not go all the way back to show forth uh, to where it's, um, we have to take out a lamp and hold it over uh, from the 10th to the 14th because where we are in time, we understand that the lamb, see, that was held over to the 10th to the 14th was the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And so therefore, pertaining to his death, burial, and resurrection, we understand that with the principles that he is the lamb. So this is showing forth what is being illustrated when we're showing you that here, that this time frame is showing forth when the children of Israel, see, we're going to and through the dividing waters of the Red Sea, which is manifesting right here, based upon the specification that Yahweh Elohim had given unto the children of Israel at this particular time. So now what we're showing you is uh, not only the recapitulation based upon what was going on, but we really want you to understand what's going on at this particular time, as well as the reason why that we read to you the things that are going on um, within the news. Um, when we say to you that we're reading to you our ecologies, okay? So now the importance of us showing you 
this particular line uh, on uh, this particular calendar is because, as I said, that this is the account of the children of Israel when they were, after they had went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Now, right now, this is showing forth how the, how the children of Israel, they are learning the law of the Sabbath and the gathering of manna at this particular time, them being out here within the wilderness of Sinai at this particular time. Now, what we have done was pertaining to the days that we have at the bottom part that's showing forth um, the, uh, the children of Israel's um, exit up out of the land of Egypt. This line here, as I said, which is the Pentecost line, because it is showing forth the 50 days journey, okay, after they had went to and through the divided waters of the uh, Red Sea up until the time that the children of Israel are to come see in front of Mount Sinai, see which we have showed you and manifested uh, within our textbook, how that Yahweh Elohim wanted his people, see, to manifest themselves. Give me one more, please. That Yahweh Elohim wanted the people to manifest themselves right out here at the plateau of the mountain so that Yahweh Elohim could speak down unto them. Okay? Right here. All right? So this was the purpose of Yahweh uh, setting up a day which was April or Abib or Nisan which he said unto the children of Israel shall be the first day of the month and the first day of the year unto you. Because now Yahweh Elohim is establishing a time frame. So now what we do is that when we're looking at this particular time frame, the time frame um, is very, very important. Because what happens with this time frame, when we look at this time frame, what happens is, is that it takes it all the way down to show us the prophetic sequence and time based upon the things that are manifesting within Yahweh Elohim's purpose, okay? And what this does is it picks up the weeks of scripture. Now, the week of scripture, what they are is it shows forth how you would have a week of days. Then it goes forth to show you how it has a week of weeks. Then it says a week of months to where you have a week of years. Then you have a week of week of years. And then you have a week of millenniums. And then you have a week of ages. Now, all of this is based upon how that this calendar that Yahweh Elohim had instructed the children of Israel to, to have. Okay. And this is their timetable. Because based upon this particular timetable and these accounts will show forth the things that Yahweh Elohim um, allowed uh, his, the things that he done within his creation to manifest based upon this particular timetable. Now, what we have here is that we have right here on this wall, we have the whole entire year, okay, illustrated right here upon this wall. Instead of on the chart, we have the first four months, okay? Now, what we're trying to show you on this particular chart, based upon, like we said, um, the children of Israel coming up, up out of the land of Egypt, that this is everything that was done that first entire year that the children of Israel were in the wilderness of Sinai, okay? And so everything that they've done leading up into the 40 years that they were in the wilderness of Sinai, this picks that up too. Now, this particular diaphragm, this is um, uh, what I learned from Dr. Daryl E. Kinley. 
he showed me this diaphragm, okay? And what he did was he showed me all the way from day one of how we went over there in Exodus to show forth how that based upon this lunar phase that's manifesting right here, uh, that within all the time that the children of Israel have spent within the wilderness of Sinai, that this was the calendar and the time frame. So what this gentleman has done was, was that from day one all the way up until the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, which is pretty much practically 4,000 years of data, this gentleman has a scroll that looks like the one I just showed you on the wall with the biblical events and the moon phases and the things that took place within the heavens, okay? So now I know you're probably wondering, well, why uh, would you do that? What we're trying to do is, is that what we're doing is that based upon this particular timetable, what it does is, it shows forth all the prophecies that led up until the time uh, that the children of Israel went into servitude, up until the time of the prophecy of Daniel, to where it shows forth the Messiah coming in to go through his death, burial, and resurrection. So what we do is that we just shared with you that they're getting ready to be a supermoon. Okay, this evening. And so what we do is, is that we follow, see these moon phases because these moon phases is telling us the things that are manifesting within the heavens just as well as the things that are manifesting down here on the earth plane. Now what we did on the chart pertaining to the moon phases, we're showing you how that we've been keeping up with all the moon phases. Very, very important. We're showing you right here that every time that there has been a blood moon um, that we have been picking them up, we shared with uh, shared this with you before. Excuse me one moment, please. And so with these moons, okay, which is very significant that the majority of the time that these moons have happened had been in the month of April or Abib. Okay, pertaining to Yahweh Elohim's purpose. And then we've been watching pertaining to the moon phases, okay? And then we've shown forth how that this right here, see, let me back up this a little bit, how this right here is a reflection, see, of the blood moon pertaining to the moon that's manifesting right here, that's picking up time, all right? And you see right here, it says that uh, the lunar eclipses and uh, birth of Eve. Okay, so that's what um, this is manifesting right here. Now, what we're going to do is, is go here because um, this is very, very important pertaining to what we were talking about. Now on the, uh, on the prophetic calendar, it only goes up to 360 days. Um, and what I would like uh, right now, if we could go uh, to our textbooks, if you, you are, are in the uh, 1961 version of the textbook, uh, go to page eight. Um, if you are in the uh, regular textbook, let us go to uh, page um, 103 uh, and um, volume one. And what this is, is that we will be picking up the uh, Jewish calendar. And then it'll be showing us uh, how that in Abib, how that with the festivals, it'll be showing, showing forth how one of the, the festivals is manifesting in the moon. moon. Now, importance of this that when we are showing you what is manifesting right up here this is showing forth right up here this particular line right here it is showing you the uh the application of scientific data 
that is pertaining to when you're looking at this line right up here, this is showing forth how that this is the eclipse season manifesting right up here. Okay, on this top line. This line right here is manifesting the, uh, the, the weeks of days pertaining to the prophecy that is manifesting the 1260 days. Okay, so what this line is, is pertaining to uh, all the days uh, that is manifesting up until this time pertaining to the prophecy that we understand that had manifested with Daniel and as well uh, with John on the Isle of Patmos. And then we look at that's right here, see, that this is the number of days of the week pertaining to that this is the sixth day and it's showing forth how that with this solar eclipse, that this phenomenal day is manifesting when the sun is being darkened. And this is the age of 33.5, which is the age, see, of, uh, which is the age that the Yahshua Messiah uh, on the post luvian age, Doc, I'm sorry, you have static. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. sorry. Yeah, I, maybe you need to move your mic down or up. Okay, I know what it is. It's the antenna rubbing up against probably my jacket. I was in that. Okay, you still, you still, uh, you still have some static. I still have some static. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. When you start speaking, you get static. Okay, I'm, I'm trying, trying to move the uh, microphone. Oh, I, I do apologize. No, okay. no problem. Okay. That's what we're here for. Right. Now here, this thing. right. Now here, you're looking at um, the month at dark. And then here, it is showing forth the beginning of month because it is showing forth the month of ABIB that's manifesting all over again and this is showing forth the first sacred month just like the month that we are in right now okay I showed you how that we manifest that we are that it's the uh 26th day that we are today here when we're going all the way back based upon the time when it was manifesting with the messiah it was on a tuesday tonight is a wednesday because we know based upon the calendar with the recalculation of numbers, how that everything always go back to zero after so many years, okay? So now this is showing how that we are in the beginning of month back within the month of, 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 of April and we're showing forth the crucifixion of what manifested with the Messiah, okay? And we're showing forth the end of it pertaining to the prophecy that's in the middle See, of the month, okay, I'm talking not the month, I'm talking about the calendar to where we have it, we're at the 180th day instead of being at a whole 360 pertaining to the end. Because we have to understand that pertaining to the months and the cycles that the Messiah uh, has to um, go through what he went through um, um, pertaining to the time and the prophecy which was given um, by the three wise men, as well as was manifesting with the prophecy of the 1260 days. Okay. Now, the reason why these things are so important and we're picking up this timetable is because that we have to go back and it shows us this here. Okay. Okay. Yes. The three phenomenal days. Yes. Okay. Because what this is showing forth that when we are looking, looking at this, this, and it is showing you how that Yahweh, Yahweh is showing forth how when we look at this, it's showing forth the night, mm -hmm. dark, and then it's showing forth the day mm -hmm. and the light. Yeah. Now I want you to pay attention how you see how these arrows are going around, just like how they are going around. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And I want you to pay attention to where when you look at when it says the night, how you have 12 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then it goes to 3 a.m. Right. Then it goes to 6 a.m. Right. Then it goes to 9 a.m. Okay. And then along with that, it shows you that from, from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., that's the first watch. We got your 6 p.m. to your 9 p.m. That's your first watch. Okay. Your second watch is 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh-huh. 
Your third watch is 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. And then your fourth watch is 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Okay. Now, when you look at the day, it is showing forth how it is the 12 o'clock p.m. is your sixth hour. And then your three o'clock p.m. is your ninth hour. And then when you get down to um, 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., it's showing forth how it is your first hour. And then right along to where it is showing forth how that when you're at 9 a.m., it is the third hour. Okay. Now, I want you, the reason why that I'm going over these things, because I want you to pay attention to them, because they're going to come back up again. Now, I just show and shared with you how that when we were going over um, the calendar, how that that had put us pertaining to how when Israel were coming up out of the land of Egypt, that that had put us on the 11th day pertaining to the 50 days journey um, that led them up into the mountain where Yahweh Elohim has spoke down to them. Right. Okay. Now, the reason why that is so important and it's coming right back here to when the time that the Messiah died, this is leading up unto an eclipse cycle. The reason why I want you to pay attention to the time frame up here because we're getting ready to come back because the time frame is very, very important. So now, when you look right here, you see how that after the eclipse, that 15 days afterwards, we have a lunar eclipse. And mm -hmm. this shows forth that right after the Messiah had, had went through his death, burial, resurrection, that it, we have a lunar eclipse to where the moon turned to blood. That's manifested okay. right here. Okay. And that had manifested on the uh, 15th um, of the, of, uh, I'm sorry, hold on. That manifested 15 days after the Messiah had went through his death, burial, resurrection, which manifested on the 30th day of April, okay? okay. Which was the last day of mm -hmm. Abia. Now, when we look right here, this is manifesting the 15th day, okay? That's showing forth when we're looking at this, at, at pertaining to when, the 1260 had manifested that's right here see mm -hmm. it manifested at the same time that um the prophet daniel had prophesied okay. now when we come here and we're looking at this is manifesting the 15 days after the messiah had went through his death burial resurrection and we're looking at how we have this blood moon right here that mm -hmm. this is the same line that's manifesting on our pentecost line which we showed you over here on this chart here <clears throat> Okay. The reason why I'm showing you this is really, really important. I know I've been doing a lot of ex explaining and a lot of talking, but as I showed you before, that right here, that on the Pentecost line, mm -hmm. it put us on the 11th day. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. That's 26 of April today. All right. So we go, uh, we seen up there that that blood moon that happened 15 days after the Messiah. Okay. So we mm -hmm. count 15 days because that's pertaining to Pentecost, right? After the children of Israel had went to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. Now we can't count the days uh, when uh, the 10th to the 15th because we understand that the Messiah is a sacrifice. Okay. Okay. That don't pertain mm -hmm. to us because um, it wasn't for any um, Gentile at this particular time to partake of that. Okay. Right. All right. right. So that's that's the reason why. So mm -hmm. that has us here. All right. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I said that that was 15 days, which would have it have manifested. That would be right here, right? Mm -hmm. And so if that's the 11th, that's one, two, three. That's four. Mm -hmm. That would be four days. Okay. Right. Okay. Now we have had lectures that we have read that um, when we have thought that it was the day of uh, atonement and we were in the month of um, October, that we have read lectures to where the founder said that it's not the day of atonement because it had manifested within the month of November, okay? Now, the reason why that we are telling you this is because pertaining to the calendars, dates, and times, sometimes things change, okay? okay? 
Now, the reason why that I had asked us to go to the uh, archetype um, was, was because, because we, I, wanted I wanted to pick up, up the uh, Jewish, Jewish calendar. calendar. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. so, so now, Elder, Elder if, if you, you are, are in your version, version mm -hmm. I would like for you to go to page four. Um, Dr. Johnson, if you are in your version, I want you to go to page 93 uh, in, uh, in the other volume of the archetype. And what I want you to pick up uh, is... 93, volume one? Yes, 93... Uh, volume one, and I want you to pick up the cro the chronological era of four years. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we understand that um, where we are up here, see, and this is the time, like I said, that the Messiah was crucified. This is why this this is so so very important because this is the month. Okay. Okay. Now I share with you that when we're on that Pentecost line, that the Pentecost line shows forth how that, um, that it being the 26th of April, which is today, that we are four days shy. Is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the reason why that we are here within the, in, within the archetype, and it is showing forth how it is a chronological four-year era pertaining mm -hmm. to the 4004, pertaining to how that we are picking up the time frame that the Messiah was being form, uh, born, that we know that it was a four-day era because right. it has four, 4004 instead of 4,000 years. Is that correct, Elder? Right, right. All right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we understand that pertaining to the law of Yahweh, that based upon the disobedience of the children of Israel when they came of out, out of the uh, land of Egypt, that because of their disobedience, it was a year for a day. Is that correct? Right. So therefore, what we do is, is because instead of the four years, we don't add on any years, we go back and we do a year for a day. Is that correct? Right. So therefore, <laughs> if it was the 11th, was the 11th, where we are, Okay, you understand? Uh -huh. that, that will put us, see, on the 11th, and we apply those four days, that will mm -hmm. put us on the 15th. Is that correct? Correct. That will put us right here where the blood moon is manifesting, right here when the Messiah, uh, uh, two weeks after the Messiah had went through his death, burial, and his resurrection. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. See? So, now that being said, what we're trying to share with you is that tonight... It said that it's going to be a super moon manifesting within the sky. Correct. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. So what we're showing you that pertaining to the, uh, what Yahweh Elohim had instructed the first day of the year to be, you understand what I'm saying, and to the children of Israel, what mm -hmm. we have done was we have allowed that to be our first day of the year to understand the things that Yahweh Elohim is talking about pertaining to when he is talking about prophetic time and his sacred calendar. Right. Okay. So, so now what we have just shared with you that, that pertaining to, to Yahweh Elohim's sacred calendar and the time frame, frame we, we had, had just, just showed, showed you that, that pertaining to this super moon that is manifesting within the heavens right now, tonight, we have just showed you pertaining to the prophetic the prophetic and the sacred calendar, how that yeah. with the four days, okay? Now, one other thing that me and Dr. Johnson always talk about that we talk about those leap years. Right. Mm -hmm. Ain't that right? Because within those leap years, that's a four, that's a four day difference when you have a leap year pertaining to a year or a frame when you have that month of February. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's very important to understand too when you're looking at this, this time frame. So now what we're showing you that pertaining to this blood moon that has manifested 14 days or 15 days after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua Messiah, we're showing you in the heavens how this a re-manifestation of something that's pertaining to the moon is manifesting within the heavens. And that moon that you're going to see tonight is going to turn red. Right. Okay? So now we shared with you within our previous lecture, we shared with you how that uh, the cycles of the moon which were 20, uh, we have 28 moon phases, mm -hmm. okay? And we shared with you how we, we correlated that to the cycles, see, of a woman, all right? Right. right. Now, 
Now we finna get into some good stuff now. Okay, that was the hard part. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Now. The reason why that we were sharing that with you and the significance of that, okay, is that when you are looking at this chart here, we want to share some things with you on this particular chart tonight. Now, when you are looking at how that we showed you the time frame, right? Okay, that's manifesting uh, from Abia up until now. All right, and we're showing you how that the top part of this is showing for the uh, prophetic months with gold straight 30 days, and they do not change every 30 days. That this top line, which is the prophetic, which is prophetic months, they do not change. Right. When you come to the lunar or the sacred calendar, it shows forth that this particular calendar goes every 30 and every 29 days each and each month. OK, you got one to go 30 and one to go 29 days. And then mm -hmm. with this one, it only goes up to 360 instead of 365 as the right. Gregorian calendar. Do. OK, mm -hmm. so now when we take you all the way through here and we're showing you that this is leading up into the children of Israel going to and through the divided waters. See of the River Jordan. I mean, I'm sorry, of the Red, Red sea. sea, and they're mm -hmm. getting ready to come out into uh, the wilderness of Sinai. Mm -hmm. We're showing you how that by the week of scriptures, and then based upon the the lunations that are manifesting with uh, within the moon cycles, what mm -hmm. we're showing you, we're leading up until this eclipse cycle that has manifested. See, um. Uh, pertaining to where we are within our textbook, talking about the 4,000 years based upon uh, that the Messiah had to fulfill, showing forth that at the beginning of the 4,000 years, you got the man Adam being born, okay? Right. All the way up until the time that the Messiah had to fulfill all of that. This is the reason why that we have this manifesting right up here, okay? Let me show you. Let me Let me zero in a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about pertaining to this eclipse cycle, okay? Now, this eclipse cycle is showing you right here how that when we was up on the other chart, how we were showing you how from, from 1 to 33 to 37 days to 173 days is an eclipse season, that you can have an eclipse any time around that particular time. Now, the importance of what we're trying to show you pertaining to this eclipse that is manifesting, that we're talking about, that's so important, that manifested in the month of April, okay? Because it's manifesting what had manifested up here, all right, with this phenomenal day here, all right? And we understand that how it was two days in one day to pick up three days from Friday to Monday so that we can see how the Messiah had went through his death, burial, and resurrection uh, within um, those phenomenal days, okay? So now when we come here, what I'm trying to um, show forth is, is that when we are on this timetable, that when you see how that the children of Israel had went to and through uh, the Red Sea, that it is the same manifestation as when the sons of, uh, of Elohim resurrected with the Messiah. Now, right here, we have the, the sun that's manifesting because it's taking you all the way back, showing you that pertaining to the, uh, the burning equinox, that we're picking up the time frame that's going all the way back to the astrolog count of zero pertaining to the time frame of the man. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that we're doing it and we're taking you back so far, see, to show you this is to show you how that the man at, or the S-O-N and the S-U-N is one in the same, okay? Now, I'm really trying to, uh, to, uh, to line this up so that you can see um, what I'm talking about pertaining to this eclipse cycle because what we're doing is that we're picking up a time frame that's very, very... Uh, important that I'm trying to um, bring out. So what I want to do is that I want to go to um, to this particular play here, okay? 
Now, when the children of Israel were coming up out, out of the land of Egypt, it was 12 o'clock midnight, okay? That time is very, very important because we understand that pertaining to what Yahweh Elohim has said in the beginning, and that takes us back, back here to uh, plate number six, he said that the evening and the morning divided a day. And that's what we have here. So when we come to place six, Yahweh Elohim said, let there be light. But when we come here, it says this is division between the evening and the morning. Okay, mm -hmm. that's manifesting right here. Now, the reason why that we're trying to pick up the time frame and show you how that it was 12 o'clock, because what happens is it's coming back to be principled uh, right here up under the chaosis plate, which is plate five. All right. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is that we're taking this all the way down to show you the significance of when we talk about how these three particular plates have so much significance throughout Yahweh Elohim's purpose is that that we're coming back here to the place of origin and we're taking it all the way back here to show you that when the man, see, was created, see, on the sixth day, he was created at 12 o'clock midnight. Hmm. Okay? 12 o'clock. See? Now, I want to In show you. the location you. of Eden, right? Huh? At the location of Eden was midnight. Yeah. At the location of where the man wasn't created in Eden. He was created outside of Eden. Right. Okay? He was he outside created. of the garden. Yeah. yeah that's that's what I was trying to get. I was trying to get the location. Yeah. Right. He was created outside of Eden. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So now what I'm trying to show you is that we showed you how that the man was created. You understand what I'm saying? Out of a mountain. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm showing you this right here because I'm showing you how this is 12 o'clock midnight because we understand that the children of Israel, see, when they came up out of the land of Egypt, see, they had to prepare themselves and get ready at 12 midnight. You understand what I'm okay. saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Hear me? Okay. Yep. I want you to see these principles, okay, because they're very, very important because of where we are in time right now. Now, this is happening in Abia, all right? Right. Right. Okay. You're doing fine. Okay, so now I'm just showing you how I'm related. So therefore, it is at nighttime when the man, at 12 o'clock, when the man, when Yahweh Elohim formed the man. Now, I share with you on uh, where we were, I believe if you are in the 1961 version, uh, mm -hmm. on, you might be on page four, and if you are in the other version, uh, you should be on maybe uh, page uh, 93. Okay, and we're talking about the uh, the uh, the four the four days. Okay, so now when we're looking at uh, uh, th this particular four thousand, what I, when I when I'm talking about time, and I share with you how this is um, twelve o'clock, that mm -hmm. this is we go from twelve o'clock at night, mm -hmm. we go to three o'clock in the morning, right here, because okay. this is showing forth how that this is a division between. Um, uh, uh, body and your soul. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is twelve uh, midnight. This is three o'clock in the morning, and then when you do the division between your soul and your spirit, this is manifesting six o'clock. Okay, mm -hmm. this is okay. six o'clock in the morning. All mm -hmm. right. Now we have to remember that this is a phenomenal day. Okay, right. just like the phenomenal day that we're talking about. All right. Right. Now this being six o'clock in the morning. When we get right here, this is nine o'clock in the morning, right here. Okay? Okay. Nine o'clock in the morning. And then <clears throat> when we get right here, see, this is manifesting 12 o'clock noon. Okay? Because okay. between nine o'clock and 12 o'clock, this was the eclipse that is manifesting, which we're talking about. See, when we show you, What's being illustrated when we share with you this right here, when we're talking about the 4,000, which is the year, or 4,000 a.m., or Yahweh's fourth day, okay? Because this is the beginning of the Sarah cycle, okay? Lining up with, with, um, with millennial time pertaining to the equivalent time of, 50, not, of 5490 B.C., and we're talking about at 12 o'clock noon, 
And this is the creation of Adam. And we are in the age of, of Aries pertaining to the eclipse season. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the reason why that I'm showing you this, and I'm showing you that this, at this particular time period, okay, because what we're doing is, is that we're authenticating everything that we're talking about pertaining to this divine vision and the vision that was given to uh, our founder in the year 1931, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that I was able to give you this particular time frame, you understand what I'm saying? And I came right here to show you that this was nine o'clock in the morning. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Before, um, before we get here to 12 o'clock to show forth the eclipse when he brought forth the, the, the woman up out of the man. Because if you see right here within the creation, you see how, you see how it's dark outside and then right. you see how it's morning time. But yeah. you still don't see the sun that's up. So this right. is why I'm able to tell you how this is 12 midnight to three o'clock to six o'clock. And then right. when we get down here, it's nine o'clock. We know that the sun is still coming up in, in, in the sky. And we're exactly. showing you that this is the woman being clothed in the sun because this is showing you the eclipse right here. Exactly. And, then when, and then when the man wakes up, you see the sun in the sky and then you see the woman standing right next to him. You right. understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that I know that this was manifesting, you understand what I'm saying, at nine o'clock in the morning is because of this right here. You see that? Nine o'clock. Yes. In yes. In nineteen thirty-one. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> so, so you you have to understand that. See, the founders they said that when the founder had his vision, right? See, it said that his back went out. Mm-hmm. That it helped him upstairs. You see that man laying on his back? Yep. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it's showing forth how this is, this is a spiritual immersion when the spirit had entered in. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? And so, therefore, when we're looking at this, this had manifested June 6th. Yes. Okay. At nine o'clock with nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the time that Adam, you understand what I'm saying, was being brought forth. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, pertaining to when we see the scriptures being remanifested all the way down. And right. seeing how, how the scriptures is overturning and overturning. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yes, mm -hmm. you have so to see a look, repeat. Yeah, we have to see a repeat and going <laughs> according to everything that Yahweh Elohim has set up. You understand what I'm saying? Pertaining to the rules and regulations that, that he has set up. You understand right. what I'm saying? Now, I, I know mm -hmm. I'm doing a terrible job in my explanation. But, but see, where I'm going with this is, is that when we're looking at all these things pertaining to repeat and we're looking at this and I said to you how that the man Adam was uh created at 12 o'clock and we line all these principles up we can see you understand what I'm saying how did all these principles line up pertaining to what happened with the children of Israel pertaining to their migration coming up out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. we follow the principles all the way back because we can see how that when we look at the angelic transgression right here how we can see how darkness had manifested see upon the face of the deep or the whole entire world which is manifest the same blackness or darkness that's manifesting when the man was being brought forth okay? right so mm -hmm. now these same principles um are manifesting <laughs> because of what happened all the way back within the realm of, of eternity mm -hmm. so when we come here and we look at the vision see and the things that are taking place and we see how that we looked at the moon phases to see how that uh, that the lunar phases show this time frame. And then we go all the way back to see how uh, the man was uh, being brought forth and how that the man is lined up with with the uh, sun in the sky. This right. is the reason why that we go back here and we understand that from the, the third day of creation, which is manifesting the uh, the. Um, Manifesting the purpose pertaining to biology with both trees, we see how mm -hmm. that the man is irresponsible to the third day of creation that's right. manifesting right here. And then right along with, with the sun that's manifesting on the fourth day of creation. Exactly. Boy, this is a mouthful. From here to <laughs> here. And this is why we have here when we see how we got principles of the man, we got mm -hmm. principles of the sun, and then we yep. got principles of the tree. 
You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Because yep. see, when we're looking at this particular eclipse that's manifesting, this is when Yahweh is taking the uh, the uh, taking the woman up out of the man, so he's no longer an homorphodite. Now exactly. I'm saying that again because we have to understand that when we look at the things that's manifesting within the heaven, they got to be the same things that manifest on the on the earth. Okay. Right. And so the reason why that I took you through all of that is to show you this right here, because what we're looking at, it appears that we might be looking at a man manifesting within the garden. And all these are animals, trees, and everything because we're showing forth what happened uh, in the beginning pertaining to what happened within Moses' vision. And that's exactly. all the thing right up here. Okay? Yeah. But mm -hmm. what we're trying right. to just sit up and show you that pertaining to uh, the accounts, because we're talking about the things that's manifesting with the lunar calendar, we are telling you about astrology. Right. All right? That is the main thing that I'm trying to sit up and convey. And so that brings us here to show you how that we have this plate here with the four zodiac elements mm -hmm. and the four beasts before the throne of Yahweh, which is right. manifesting right here. Now, right. what you have right here, when we're talking about the four, four zodiac elements, the four zodiac elements are the, the zodiac elements. We have we understand that there are 12 zodiacs, okay? Right. 12 and signs. Then, right. right. We have 12 zodiac signs. And we understand mm -hmm. that the 12 zodiac signs is a representation of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel because everything is in related unto that. Okay. Right. Our description. And we understand that pertaining to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, that that goes all the way back and related to the 12 orders of angels. Okay? Right. And that's what you are seeing here. Mm -hmm. All right. When you look at you know, all these angels that manifested themselves all right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. 12 orders of angels. All right. Now here it is showing forth how we have four elements that goes along, see, with the creation. And we understand that those elements are fire, mm -hmm. water, mm -hmm. air, and mm -hmm. earth. Okay. So that's right. why you see the color differential up here. The red is for fire, the green is for earth, the blue is for water, and the white is for air. Okay? Now, now the reason why that I'm going through all of this is, is to, to show you that, that when you're looking, looking at, at this part of the chart, okay, and you're seeing how that you're seeing all these things, and you're looking at the man. Let me come right here. Now, I said that you see the man manifesting himself right, right here. here. Right. You see how you got this ram that's manifesting right here, okay? Mm -hmm. You see the woman, and then you see how the spirit of law is manifesting uh, everything within the creation because we understand that from spirit law that that's an imprint not only in the angelic creation but in the physical creation as well. Right. Now, when you come to astrology, that when we come to astrology, that we are in the first house of the astrology. Uh, astrology system. Let me come here to this other chart that's on the wall and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this chart here. Boy, this is harder than what I thought. But nevertheless, you have to give it the old college try. <laughs> okay. Now, here, that when you look in this house of Aries, that it starts on April 21st. Okay. Okay. And it's showing you how that in the house of Aries, when it's pertaining to Yahweh, it says that I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that I'm showing you this is because that we were talking about the feminine counterpart of Yahweh Elohim. Let me go here so I can show you what I was talking about pertaining to the houses, okay? Because these are the astrolog houses. Mm -hmm. This astrology is very, very important pertaining to the things that we're talking about, all right? Now, that's the house right there where we see Aries. Right. All right? This is the house, all right? Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into all of the degrees and the, this, the, the key signs and the, the, planet, the planetary data. All I want you to pay attention to is that it's showing forth that within this house, it's mm -hmm. showing forth that the, the date is April 21st from mm -hmm. March 
21st to show you how that this was the last house you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying of the zodiac system pertaining to how that all of the uh, the um, days of the month have zodiacs that manifest within the skies, within the heavens, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Okay. So now that being said, and we are in April, what I'm trying to share with you that when we come all the way back and we look at the vision that's being revealed over here, okay. That when we have, um, one second, give me one second. Now, what this is showing for that we're looking, looking at up here is that we have a birthday. You're cutting out, Doc. What we're looking at when we're showing you this up here, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. It's showing forth how that. Virgin Mother Earth, on the creation, has a zodiac sign mm -hmm. with the man. Like how every birthday, yeah. we, have, we have a zodiac That's sign pertaining to our birthday. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. So now what I'm trying, trying to sit up and share with what I, which I did a lousy job doing, was that this is the month of the Earth's birthday, along with the man, the man Adam's birthday. And showing forth that when you see how you have the ram right here and the man, it is showing forth that this is the zodiac or this is Aries of the creation That's right here. Okay. Okay. And so therefore we're showing forth how the creation has a zodiac as well as showing forth the zodiac of the creation and the man manifesting simultaneously when he was brought forth from the, uh, from the dust of the ground. So when we're looking at this part of the chart, even though it looks like it is a creation uh, in operation or fluid, this is also in the thing you understand that's manifesting in the heavens because we have major and minor axes. These are things that are manifesting within the heavens because it's the same thing that's taking place on the earth. See? Yeah, Doc, you're, you're still cutting out and there's still a lot of static in there. And I have to leave in about in about 15 minutes. Okay, Doc. I, 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 I understand. I appreciate it. But I'm trying to how, how, how does it sound now? Can you hear me a little it, bit now? Yeah, no, we still we still have you breaking up and a lot of static in there. I don't know why that is. I can adjust this. That, um, I, I think, think that, that has, has something, something to do with, with this, this antenna. antenna. Oh, okay. How does it sound now? Okay, you're low. You have a your low. Your 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 sound. Your volume is low. It's low. Okay. Let yeah. Me see. Okay. How about now? Okay. Is it That's better. It's better. That's okay. yes, yeah, better. Okay. So basically what um, I was trying to share was how that the creation has a zodiac sign. Okay. okay. And that pertaining to the zodiac sign, we're seeing how that it is showing forth how that the zodiac sign of the whole entire creation was a sacrifice of Isaac upon Mount Moriah. Okay. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So now what we're doing is that when we were talking about the things principle <clears throat> pertaining to the most holy place, how that everything is sitting up lined up. Now, when we are talking about the things that we are talking about and we are looking at these things and we're showing forth how that when we're talking about the things pertaining to the lunar cycle and the things that we've been talking about, we're showing forth that when we're speaking about those things, how we got Moses manifesting himself right here within the moon. OK, right. so when right. we're talking about the things that we have been talking about pertaining to the cycles, the lunar cycles and things of that particular nature. And we're talking about the things that are manifesting within the cloud. You understand what I'm saying? Pertaining to the vision that when Moses was up here upon Mount Sinai for those 40 days and we're seeing all the things that were taking place. We're trying to sit up and show you the magnitude of the things that we're talking about and how that we have the creation. You understand what I'm saying? Witnessing to the things that we're talking about. 
Right. This is why it's so important that when we get the news clippings and ecologies and the news clippings that we read to you that we get from Elder Van Hook, it is showing forth the importance of how that the things that we are talking about and we are preaching on that the creation is bear witness to the things that we're talking about. Right. Now, let, me, now, let, me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, I just mm -hmm. said that we had a 2.6 magnitude, right? Uh, earthquake, right. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, let me, now, our last lecture, we were just talking about these two, these two, uh, um, these two tables of stone, right? Mm -hmm. That we had to bring up, right? We was talking about how that uh, he was laying down when we was looking at the 1961 version opposed mm -hmm. to the version that we have now, right? Right. So now we got two tables of stone that Moses had to you up. You understand what I'm saying? And we looking at how we was talking about this man right here, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I believe that that's two, and the number of a man is six, right? That's correct. Quite six. That's you understand correct. what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And we're talking about this because it's, it's talking about the laws, you understand, saying, of the creator that's manifest. We're talking about the spirit law that's manifest itself within the physical creation. Yes. So yeah. therefore, we're showing you that with the things that we are talking about, okay, and the magnitude of the things because where we're talking about, we're talking about Moses in the cloud, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want to sit up and show you what we're talking about. Now, where we're talking about the things that we're talking about just for the sake of understanding to move fast, OK, we're coming right back up here and we're showing you that everything that we're talking about is showing for how Moses is up here seeing the vision and everything that is talked about is dictating that right up here, which is manifesting as Jerusalem above. Yes. Okay? So therefore, yes. we're talking about these things and we're showing you and these things that we, how we have Moses manifesting here on the fourth day of creation within the moon because the law was given to him and the moon is a, rep a representation of the law. And then we were sitting there telling you how that the woman, it was a representation of the woman and how that we have blood moons and how that the, the, the moon is changing. And we have that, have that tonight. The whole point and significance of what I'm trying to sit up and say was all the stuff that I've been sitting up rambling, trying to sit up and, and share with you. Okay. I haven't been rambling. It's, it's very clear, Doc. Mm -hmm. See, when you look at the color of the moon, what color yes. is that moon right here up under that woman? That's red. a red moon. That's what I'm trying to sit up and say. Uh -huh. That's and a red the moon. times of where we are when the moon is changing around this time is very significant because uh -huh. they say that when the moon changed, that this says that the apocalyptic, the apocalyptic world, see, goes in a frenzy because okay. of the description of the biblical line where it says that the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned into blood on that great and terrible day of Yahweh. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And so therefore, when we're looking at the moon pertaining to when we're talking about the principles of a woman, that when we're talking about the blood moon or the moon changing colors, that the only time that you see the moon in a different color is up under the woman when she is being clothed back in the sun. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up these principles is because I'm leading you up to when we get into the kingdom are being translated into the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, that these same very principles are going to come right back up. Exactly. Okay? So this is why when I'm showing you this, and we're looking over here, see, and we're looking at how you got the woman clothed in the sun. Did you see that moon? Yes. What mm -hmm. position is it in? You understand what I'm saying? Look at the Yes, point. and a downward uh, spiral. Uh -huh. Right. And then, when, and then when, the, when you have the dragon, at the woman because she's pregnant. Okay, mm -hmm. look at the moon there. Yep. Wow. At, yeah, it's an upward. Yes. Thanks. You understand that? And now we understand that the points are never supposed to be toward the sun. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Now, yeah. see, the meaning between the reason why now we're looking here, we're looking at a uh, at a, a, a winding crescent. You understand what I'm saying? But here, yes. we get the points being going back towards a woman. All these right. mean something. Mm -hmm. So the reason what I'm doing is I'm trying to bring all these points up, okay? Because when we get into the translation of the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, all these things are going to come back up. And the moon plays a very important role because we understand that right now that when we're looking at a principle pertaining to the moon, that when we look at the vision, see, we understand that the moon has been renovated. Right. See? So that's how the, well, if, if you... Earth is considered female, so when there's a lunar eclipse, the position of the Earth, if you're standing on the moon, is where the sun is, which is uh, a figure of 
a woman clothed in the sun. Yes, because you're looking at it, you, don't even, you won't even see, you won't even see the earth. Right. Yeah. So if you're standing on the moon, you'll see the earth blocking the sun. Right. So that's like the right. woman in clothes in the sun because the earth is considered female. Exactly. Right. right. And so that's why when you look at an eclipse and when you look at this symbol right here, that's And that's why, why the moon is red on the vision. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why you have that dot inside the sun. You yes. understand what I'm saying? That eclipse, all that's yeah. showing you is how that you have the uh, the moon and the earth right in between. You see what I'm saying? The sun right. is showing forth how the woman is clothed in the sun. And right. that's what it will look like. You yes. are correct, uh -huh. Doc. Yes. You understand okay. what I'm saying? That's see? Uh -huh. So now, yeah. now this is what we're trying to sit up and show you. So now, okay. see, all these principles is that when we come back here, see, and we look at the Isha, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We're showing you a time frame. Because see, we're showing you right here that when the man, we showed you and told you that this is a man laying down and standing up at the same time. Ain't that what yes. we see? Exactly. Now we're trying to show you that if the children of Israel came out at 12 o'clock midnight, we're showing you that it's dark outside, that it's midnight when this man was being formed out of the dust of the ground, standing up right, right here. Don't you see the dark behind him? Exactly. We're showing you that. So therefore, when we go to from, from him being created at 12 o'clock, because they're showing you how the children of Israel had to come out of Egypt at the same time, and we understand that they had manifested a man, you some saying, formulating in the flesh because it was 600,000 of them that came up out of the land of Egypt, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're showing you the time frame that is dark. And then it goes from 12 to 3 in the morning, which was a division between a body and soul, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I told you that from from 12 to 3 to 6, you understand what I'm saying? That when we go to the vision of our founder, it says that it was a division between soul, mm -hmm. soul and spirit. Is that right? Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now, wait a minute. If that's a division between soul and spirit, what is Moses doing? Ain't Moses removing the spirit from his chest cavity? That's See? Correct. And he's removing it. Okay, mm -hmm. so therefore, if he's removing, you understand what I'm saying, uh, the spirit, you know what I'm saying, from his, from his chest cavity, and it's showing you how he is removing the spirit from his soul and is making a division and giving you the time frame right here. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. So therefore, you see the time frame that's manifesting uh, along with that right here. Now, when we have showed you over there that when we were in the zodiac sign of Aries, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a fire sign. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. it's fire. Fire. It's manifesting right here. Mm -hmm. And it's taking us all the way back to the first day of creation because it is the zodiac of the creation. And then now you see the fire going back to the first day of creation. And now we got Moses removing it, throwing it down to where we're showing you that it is the division of light and darkness manifesting within the world pertaining to the zodiac sign and then was manifesting on the first day of creation. Mm -hmm. And it's manifesting right now. So right. it's letting you know that even though that we are in the zodiac of Aries, that the whole entire creation is on fire right now. And that's the reason why that that moon is red up under that woman. And that's interesting, Doc, because today is also when we were talking about the 2.6. Yes. Today is also the 26. Six. That's right. So, so we're running the principle of line upon line line up on line, precept upon precept. That's correct. That's what we're doing. All the way down, oh, yes. all the way down. See, mm -hmm. showing you yeah. from all the way from the zodiac of the whole entire universe yes. and the month that we're in. And we're yes. showing you how that is manifesting right up here, see, in the heavens. Yes. This is the reason why that we got these lines going like this. Right. Okay. Because yes. this is the rotation of the planets going around the sun. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Going yeah. in the same direction as I showed you up there on that chart. You understand what I'm saying about the night and the darkness. Mm -hmm. The same direction that is going in when we're looking at how that when the children of Israel were going to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, it says that an east wind turned all that night. Yes. Yes. Now and see, Doc, I've got to leave. But okay. I will join you again on Wednesday night, Yahweh willing. Thank you, Elder. Thank, Thank you. you, Doc. Thank you. Okay, so now you see that right here, pertaining to when the children of Israel were going, were going to and through the divided waters of the Red Sea, that the motion, you see what I'm saying, of the sea was going in the same direction as the planetary system. 
was going in the same direction as not only the, the uh, planetary system of how they rotate around the sun, but how that the, 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 uh, the earth rotates around the sun. Mm -hmm. See? And so that's what we're picking up. And so these are the significant things of what I'm talking about pertaining to how that the earth's zodiac sign, which is Aries, is manifesting the same principles of what the children of Israel had went through. You understand what I'm saying? During the time that they was coming up out of the land of Egypt during this time and the things that they were going through, see, within the wilderness of Sinai. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? See, mm -hmm. so now, now you understand that with this time frame, you understand what I'm saying that you can see the time frame manifesting simultaneously. Because see, everybody just thought that, oh, okay, well, this is manifesting the carbon and space of the deep that's manifesting all around this particular chart. No, it's manifesting time. And it's also mm -hmm. manifesting the watches. So yeah. if I can take this time frame that's showing you that these watches is going all the way back. This is how our founder, okay, was able to tell you the events of the world that was getting ready to take place by the watch on his wrist because he was mm -hmm. looking at it through the prophetic sequence and then keeping the time frame of of the four watches pertaining to the time frame that i just shared with you on the wall yeah now what i just did was was showed you how that with the days of the sacred calendar and the prophetic calendar and i light everything up just like how i just light everything up to show you how that um that right now, how that we are in the uh, zodiac of Aries in mm -hmm. the month of April, this was how I was able to prophesize the earthquake last year, April 1st, because everything mm -hmm. lined up. Now, you mm -hmm. see how I just lined up everything and I showed you and we put those four days and we showed you how that that blood moon manifested um, uh, 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 exactly 15 days after the death, burial and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You see how that moon lined up with this moon? You understand what I'm saying? On the 26th, you understand what I'm saying? And we're in the same okay. month. You understand what I'm saying? We're in the same month. Mm -hmm. But that's showing forth how that manifested on the 15th day, okay, of April. And then we're on the 26th day of April. And we are in, uh, we're 4,000, no, we're 2,000 years, okay, from the day mm -hmm. that that happened. You understand what I'm saying? And we're showing yeah. how that we're two weeks, you understand what I'm saying, but the same thing had manifested within the skies, within the heavens, that manifested with Yahshua the Messiah after he went through his death, burial, and resurrection. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's dead bang time. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? See, that's yeah. unerring accuracy according to the scriptures. Okay? I just, yeah, we said at the same time. <laughs> that's unerring. You understand what uh -huh. I'm saying? And that's showing you Yahweh Elohim's timetable, okay, yeah. in his time frame pertaining to what mm -hmm. he told the children of Israel and what was manifesting within the sky during the time that he told them, and it's still manifesting now. So yeah. this is what we were talking about when we was talking about, about how everybody thinks that the phenomenons, you understand what I'm saying? They're not phenomenons. We just showed how everything recapitulate and is right on time according to the scriptures. If you are mm -hmm. on, you understand what I'm saying, prophetic time using the prophetic sequence. You understand? Yeah. See? Now I just haven't mastered it, mastered it, mastered the time frame down, like how the founder did, to where he could tell you every event according to the time frame that's manifesting on his watch. Mm -hmm. I just haven't, I just haven't mastered it down like that. But the things that we are talking about, because we are talking about the things that are pertaining to uh, uh, the things in a greater, more perfect tabernacle. You understand what I'm saying? See yeah. that Yahweh Elohim is going to witness to the things that we're talking about. That's why we mm -hmm. picked up the news. See? And see another thing too. Didn't we just talk about how we was talking about uh underwater uh submarine volcanoes? Yeah. See, now brother, see now you already know these things, but see this, we just gonna do this for the viewers. Mm -hmm. Look, everything that we talked about is on these charts. What is that right there? Are these underground volcanoes? I mean, underwater volcanoes? Submarine volcanoes? <laughs> yep. Right here. <laughs> now, we were just talking about these things, okay? Now, I'm yeah. trying to sit up and show you how that everything that we have been talking about, based upon mm -hmm. the validity of how we've been talking about it, <clears throat> because we have been, see, within the heavens, within the most holy place. You understand what I'm saying? 
hey yeah. man, we tell you like this. All anybody got to do is look at our lectures and look at the news clippings that we have been talking about and look and see how the creation has been bearing witness of the, everything that we have been talking about ever since that we have been holding class. Mm -hmm. Now, now you tell me, now I ain't trying, now, now come on now. I mean, we just showed the witnesses to them. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? So now, just like when the founder See, used to say every time I preach, it's going to be an earthquake. You understand what I'm saying? See, people in the audience didn't, didn't sit up and understand what he was talking about. But see, he was talking about from this prophetic sequence. <laughs> so therefore, every time that he spoke, yeah, it was an earthquake in the world. So now we're seeing the same thing based upon the things that we are talking about, based upon the validity and altitude and in-depthness of this teaching, based upon the things that we are talking about. It has the creation bear witness of the things that we are talking about, and we're seeing it manifested in the news. Yeah. Okay. See? Mm -hmm. So now we shouldn't have showing you right here how that at 12 o'clock. See, here go the woman being taken up out of the man. See, here go the rib and the womb are kind of orders. And then here we see how the woman is taken up out of the man when we get right back to 12 o'clock. And that was exactly 12 hours from the time that the man was created, that the woman came forth up out of the man. 12 wow. hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now yeah. we understand why it was 12 hours within the 12 hours. You understand what I'm saying? On a half a day, 24 hours within the totality of a day. You understand what I'm saying? To go mm -hmm. forth to pick up that 40 principle or that 41 principle to go back to validate how long that the man and woman was within the Garden of Eden pertaining to the time frame when we picking up that 24 hours within the day. Okay, yeah. to show forth that mm -hmm. thousand years that you was talking about, see, within that book. Okay, I'm talking about the book of our school. And I'm talking about the 40 days, okay, explaining how long the man and the woman was within the Garden of Eden. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, all this time frame and everything, <laughs> it shows forth how that this gospel is airtight in the things, you see what I'm saying, that Yahweh Elohim has, has laid down for us. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing is yeah. happenstance. You understand what I'm saying? So there's and, and so I am Yahweh, I change not. Malachi that's right. Change. That's right. Mm -hmm. All the way through within the creation. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we're trying to sit up and show forth. You see what I'm saying? How that these bitches are going to prove and validate themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just based upon the things that are on them and how that they're related to where we go back and show you on the father's vision. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that we just sit up and show forth. See how that June 6th. Nine o'clock in the morning, okay, mm -hmm. that our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, had his vision in Revelation, see, in the year 1931, nine yeah. o'clock in the morning. We just showed that, see, on the chart. And the vision is going to have to denote and bear witness of the fact when he had his vision. You understand what I'm saying? And see, mm -hmm. and not showing, you, you know what I mean, exactly yeah. when he did. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Because it's going to show forth how everything repeats itself. You understand? See? Wasn't 9 a.m. Uh, the hour of prayer when the priest had to take the candle out at that time? Uh, he, uh, well, no, that was that was that was first nine o'clock. You understand what I'm saying? Was first yeah. prayer. Yes, when he went in and he snuffed out the seven brass lampstand. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Rebuild it, set the table, and everything else. Yes, that was the first time that the that was from uh, the first watch. Okay, when the high priest had to go in the tabernacle and do that, you see what I'm saying? That is correct. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So, and, and that was our prayer also. Yes. And every time that he went in there, our question... prayer was like his vision. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it had to match that. Yes, it sure did. See, mm -hmm. had to. It could. It, could yeah. it, it can't err. It has to be nope. got and title. You understand what I'm saying? See. So this is what we're talking about, pretending that when we're looking at the time frame, and then when we go all the way back, see, and we look at what the principles that manifested over in plate in plate five, okay? When we're seeing how we got darkness upon the face of the deep, what's that's manifesting? You understand what I'm saying? See? Uh -huh. And it's showing forth how that when when that woman, see, is brought up out of the man, see, and we coming back and we look and we look at, you know what I'm saying, at it, see, we can see how uh how that when it comes back to where it says that when we're looking at the um, the uh, the uh, the fourth day, okay, 
or the year or the 4 a.m. Or, or Yahweh's day, which is the fourth day, we understand that when it when it's pertaining to that with the sun, and then we, we line it up with the man Adam, we can see how that at noon, you see what I'm saying, that eclipse, you see what I'm saying, was in perfection because it was the same eclipse that was manifesting right here with, with this man. You understand what I'm saying? When he was up mm -hmm. here on the cross. You see yeah. what I'm saying? And this eclipse and that eclipse have to line all the way up because, see, this was the first atom, see? And then here is the second atom. You understand what I'm saying? So when it was when, when the eclipse had happened to take the woman up out of the man, you understand what I'm saying? When we come all the way back out here and we see how that it was eclipse that had manifested within, within the sky that was pertaining to him, we see that after he went through his death, burial, and resurrection, that when he resurrected, when he woke up, they go to, they go to bride. See, the bride has to be right there to where when he resurrected, you understand what I'm saying? The bride was right, right with him. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See? And so, again, wow. we also understand that pertaining to the moon, you understand what I'm saying? It was also a manifestation of persecution. You understand what I'm saying? See? Yeah. Blood moon, right? Red here. Mm -hmm. See? Same thing that was manifesting right here. You do it like this. Right here. See that? Right here. Yeah. Persecution. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And that was showing forth how was that persecution for those seven years. You understand what I'm saying? In between um, uh, AD 33 to AD 40, when the Gentiles, see, had received the blessing. You understand? Yeah. See? So that's picking up, you see what I'm saying? Persecution as well. See? So this is the reason why that when we look at all these things and we look at the time that we're in, that it means more than what people think that it means. Now, see, let me show you another mystery right here. Okay. Do you, do you know what this means right here? Now, if you're looking at this, all, all, all it looks like is, it looks like how that this is a whale manifesting, okay, within the uh, fifth day of creation, okay? to where uh, we look at how that when we come to the vision of the founder, how that it was showing forth how you had animate and inanimate things manifesting right here. Mm -hmm. Oops. Right here. You see that? And it's showing you how that the division between animate and inanimate, okay? And you got that whale manifesting right there. Okay? Yeah. You see it? You see it? Mm hmm And then when you come here and we look at the migratory track chart, you come right up here. See that whale? <laughs> you see it? Yep. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back here because I want to show you what that whale represents. Now, hold on. I wanted to come here. Okay. Okay. Hold on. You see the whale there? Uh, see the whale? Look at, look by your actual, look at the water. You see ducks at the top, you come down, and then you see a whale, and you see an octopus. Hold on, let me, I'm going to go point to it. It's very yeah. important. Okay. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very important. See? Right here. Yeah. Right there, that's an octopus, that's a duck, you know, and ducks playing in the water, okay? But that's a whale right there, okay? Because it's mm -hmm. showing how it's the waters and how that the birds and the ducks was being created, you understand what I'm saying, on the uh on the fifth day of creation. You understand what I'm saying? And show forth how it was the animate and inanimate creatures, okay? So yeah. we just showed you how you got that whale that's manifesting right there, okay? So now when we come here, I'm gonna show you 
um, what that what that well represents. Okay. Let me. Now, have you ever heard of Myra Cetus? Myra Cetus? No. That's the constellation. Okay. Hmm. What I'm trying to sit up and share with you is that when you go to Myra Cetus, okay? Yeah. This brings you right here to this part of the chart right here. All right. Now you see right here how that when we come back to the chart, how we got that tabernacle and we got all these allergies around that tabernacle, how we got in our in that little in our little textbook. Yeah. Right. And we got all the allergies around the tabernacle that's manifesting right here. Now, when you come mm -hmm. right here, see, you're looking at um you're looking at um the uh the astrology uh chart right here, okay. And yeah. what you're showing forth is that you have all the zodiac signs. You go Aries, you go you go Taurus, you go Gemini, you go Cancer, you go Leo, you go Virgo, Libra, uh, Scorpion, Sagittarius, Scorpion, Aquarius, all, all the zodiacs, okay? But what mm -hmm. this is a manifestation of is showing forth the things pertaining to Greek mythology because it has all the things that's pertaining to Greek mythology that has something to do with the zodiacs. Because yeah. when you look at Taurus, how you got um, Orion, you got Perseus, you got Cetus right here, okay? And that's showing you how that all of these are within the, uh, within Taurus, okay? Let me, mm -hmm. let me, you see that right there? Aries. And you got Cetus right there, see this right there, see it? See this, yeah. All right, and mm -hmm. Here go the zodiac Aries. All right, we're showing mm -hmm. you how that the zodiac that we in, how that is pertaining to the constellation. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And then with this constellation, how that is pertaining to this well that's manifesting up here in the sky, but it looks like it's in the water because what's happening up here. I showed you that this is showing forth how this is the the uh the galactic axis how what you see is the things up here is the major and the things that are manifesting on earth are the minor so when you yeah. come here and you see how this is this this star is called myra Cetus, this is representing the well that ate jonah okay and it's manifesting this within the skies within the heavens see hmm. so just like how i showed you how that if this is the man, see showing forth with the with the big horn here, or the man Adam manifesting here, and this is the zodiac of the whole entire creation, and the man, you understand what I'm saying? When he was the time that he was created from Virgin Mother Earth, and this is the zodiac sign, you understand what I'm saying? That everything that you see that's manifesting here are constellations. Yeah. Okay, to show you that everything that's manifesting within the heaven is manifesting on earth. That's manifesting down here. See? That's manifesting down here. See? So all these things that you see that's manifesting up here is not just basically what it appears to be pertaining to how you see a man within the creation with everything coming in pertaining to how Yahweh Elohim has said pertaining to the days of creation within the Bible. This is also yeah. some of how all these things that are manifesting within the heavens are constellations and telling you the things you understand what I'm saying to everything that we got. Every ology that we have pertaining to all the ologies that's pertaining to our perception and our direction exam is showing you how that everything is being applied. Okay? Yeah. On the scriptures with these ologies that's all around this tabernacle with the whole entire creation. Okay? And the only way that you will get an understanding of how all of these things coexist together and manifest and function within harmony, see, is by... <clears throat> Not only a vision and revelation, but see, uh, so that you can see how the scriptures are being applied uh, today within the world. You understand what I'm saying? 
Mm -hmm. And that's really, man, that's really, really a lot. But it's just to show forth how Yahweh Elohim's purpose is unerring, man. See? Yep. And see, and all the things that take place that the world think are phenomenons or um, things um, that, uh, what they say, uh, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, phenomenons of the, of the world or acts of uh, nature or things of that particular um, nature. Um, see, we're just showing you how that pertaining to the scriptures that the source of how where they happened in the beginning. And we're showing you how they perpetuate and manifest all the way down pertaining to um, Yahweh Elohim's timetable. We showed you how that everything that manifests within the angelic creation manifests within the physical creation. And how they yeah. perpetuate all the way down. See, to show forth the overturning of the scriptures pertaining to Yahweh Elohim's purpose. Yahweh Elohim scriptures and his purpose overturns and overturns. So what mm -hmm. we were doing tonight was we were showing you Yahweh Elohim's calendar and his timetable to show you how everything within the creation, even time today, see, we showed you how time that manifests itself today is pertaining to the scriptures. See, yeah. and everybody think, you know, oh, it's a beautiful moon tonight. Let's get up under the moon and cupcake and, and do all these things. You understand what I'm saying? And don't have no idea of the spiritual significance of what that moon is representing around this time of year. Yeah. And okay. it's phases. Yeah. And it's phases. You see what I'm saying? That happened. See, man, every day, 365 days a year. You understand what I'm saying? And it's pertaining to what Yah, what thus say of Yahweh and what he wrote, you understand something in the book called the Bible. See, this is why that when we read the scriptures and we see how that when we're over in the kingship, how that they tell you uh the day, okay, the time, mm -hmm. what year it was, the king ring. You understand what I'm saying? And the day of the month pertaining to the sacred calendar. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's mm -hmm. things that manifest within that calendar that's going to perpetuate, that's going to remanifest themselves. But like I said, the manifestation is going to change, but the principle is going to remain the same. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to do that, you know what I'm saying, pertaining to the timetable. See? So, yeah. you know, you know, uh, when you know, the more and more that we go through the um perception and direction exam, you see what I'm saying, to be able to see these things. It's going to show forth over and over the repetitious nature, see, of the things that we're talking about. Dates, yeah. times, um, the things, you know, that's in the heavens, you know, pertaining to astrology, astronomy, you see what I'm saying, chronology. Um, and, you know, when we're explaining our ecologies, you understand what I'm saying, based upon, you know, it being something um, in the bio, bio soul fear that's showing forth how characters, you see what I'm saying, are living mm -hmm. in harmony you see what I'm saying, within the creation. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when we're talking about the earthquakes, we're talking about the the uh, the volcanoes and things of that particular nature, see? We're showing four mm -hmm. basic things that we are talking about. You understand what I'm saying? That, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man, there's no way that we could be talking about the things and all of a sudden after we talk about them or before we talk about them, you understand what I'm saying? They're on the news. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? See? And then we're showing forth all the witnesses and the ramifications. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and showing forth how from beginning to end, see, that it's all coming from spirit and showing forth how that spirit is going into a materialization. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's, man, it's really, really a lot, man. And, you know, when we say that we are a research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim, you understand what I'm saying? You know, this is the type of research that, you know, one does to be able to understand not only the things that that uh, are that is said in the Bible, but this is the type of research to be able to see the things that are done in the Bible. You understand what I'm yeah. saying? It's like Elder Van Hook always say, um, he showed, you know what I'm saying, his acts, I mean, his ways unto the children of Israel and his acts are to the to Moses, I, I messed that up all the way. You know what I mean? But yeah. you know what I'm trying to say. He showed his yeah. ways and his acts. You understand what I'm saying? I messed that up 100. percent But, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, you know, you, you understand? You know what I'm trying to sit up and say? You, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And so when we're going over these things and we're showing forth his ways and his acts, see, and we're showing it line for line, precept upon precept, and then we're going showing you on the calendar 
and then showing you the time frame and then bringing it back and giving you a visual a pretending to what the scriptures is talking about and showing you that's within the scriptures that is talking about right now today yeah i i i i really feel that that's that's showing forth a lot of depth uh pertaining to what we're talking about when it's coming to this gospel see yeah it holds a lot of validity in the world because we're getting dates and times you understand what i'm saying that's mm -hmm. today right now see to where we could take it all the way back based upon the things that happened in history you understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. see so that's the seriousness you know of what we're talking about and the severity see and so yeah. um, you know you you think about these things you look at these things and then what you do is that all the things that we set up and said so you check them out and see how they yeah. related to the vision and revelation that we've been going over to show you how they're unerring you understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I, I really, I really, I really feel as though that we 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 validated a whole lot to verify, and not only you understand what I'm saying, um, this pamphlet here or this book, which is a scientific introduction, see of a uh, divine pattern of the mosaic um, tabernacle. See, yeah, see, I think that we we really went through this and we showed forth with with the time frame. See, um of now what the children of Israel have went through. See, and it's showing forth how that with that prophetic time is how that we keep prophetic time based upon the things of where we at in time. See? Mm-hmm. Got, got to if, reflect. If that made any sense, you know? Yeah. 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 So, it okay, well, let us go to uh, <laughs> our doxology. Um, okay. I, I hope it was something you know, that could have been grasped out of everything that I was trying to convey. Um, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's always a lot, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we just can't take um, uh, lightly that, you know, this gospel is just a bunch of pictures and scriptures. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's not that. It was a lot, but it wasn't too much. That That's 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 what I'm trying to say. It, it wasn't too much. It was It was a lot, but it wasn't too much. Well, we can only go, um, you know, so deep, you know, with the indefiniteness yeah. that we go. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even though mm -hmm. that we're going within the indefiniteness, we can yeah. only scratch the indefiniteness that we go into without going so deep to where we lose sight of where we're trying to go pertaining to the purpose of Yahweh. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so this is why, like I say, with our perception and our direction, that if we are focused on the Messiah, then we are following him. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the direction that we were headed. And we're showing forth how that the creation and everything within it are witnesses and a reflect of him in his threefold nature and his supernal nature. See? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do and show forth how that everything within the creation is testifying of him. See, the time of the day, the month of the day, the seasons and everything. You see what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. You know, so now I'm going to end and I'll be reading over in Romans, uh, the 16th chapter, verses 25 through 27. Um, and it reads as follows. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now was made manifested by the scriptures and the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting Elohim made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. To Yahweh only wise be glory to Yahshua, the Messiah, forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We well, yeah, you know, we we uh we got through another one. It wasn't easy, you know. Um, but just to try to, you know, explain, you know, the uh, the importance of where we're at in time. Mm -hmm. And not only where we at in time, but where we at in time. And I'm talking about, you know, talking about the, the pertaining to the month that we're in. You understand what I'm saying? And every other month, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it is pertaining to that sacred calendar. And then what mm -hmm. we have to do is define that sacred calendar pertaining to the scriptures and the things that are going on within the world and line them up according to that pattern. Mm -hmm. See? And once we do that, 
then what, what happened is, is that we will be able to see the major events that's happening within nature. See? Yeah. We'll be able to see them things. And then when we're looking at the whole entire purpose, then we'll be able to line it up to be able to understand the upcoming events that's getting ready to happen futuristically. See? Yeah. Because what we're doing is, is that we're looking at it from the realm of eternity manifesting itself within the realm of time. Mm -hmm. And that's the overturning of it. See? And it's going to repeat itself. Yeah. See? So, you know, with that being said, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm grateful. I hope that we gave our viewers something uh, that they can, you know, look at uh, and something that they can learn from and, you know, you know, some for them to really take um, this teaching really, really serious and, and instead of taking it for granted that the things that are manifesting outside of their house or outside of their window, you understand what I'm saying, that, you know, it has some validity, you see, and that these things that's behind me are not just pictures, you understand what I'm saying, because the reality, like I said, is outside your door, it's outside your window, that's a true test, see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try to pick you fellas up on Wednesday. Okay, Elder, we appreciate you know what I'm saying, having you as well. And that Sorry, I was late, but I was messing with the telephone. I had to call those people to track phone again and get on their head. Well, hey, it's, it's, it's greatly appreciated. And that's, um, that's Dr. That's Elder Dr. Deborah Van Hook, or Elder Deborah Van Hook. Um, we just had um, Elder Joyce Van Hook, who had left us a little bit earlier. And, right. And so, therefore, you know, it is always a pleasure um, to have um, both of them or either one of them, you know, um, yeah. you know at, <laughs> at, at these meetings at any given time, um, basically, mm -hmm. because, um, um, like I shared with you before, my grandfather, um, uh, Dr. Uh, Clarence, um, Lions had put me in the care of uh, Dr. Uh, Joyce and Deborah Van Hook when he was alive. And yeah. since then, um, since I've been in their care, um, this, what you see behind me, is a result of the things that they have guided me, have taught me, and have, you know, shared with me uh, the things that they have learned um, since being within this teaching. And so, mm -hmm. Um, this is the reason why that um, anything uh, that have to do with them is greatly appreciated because, you know, they were like my spiritual parents um, helping me to understand the things uh, that I did. And from the things mm -hmm. that you have heard based upon the assignments and the lectures and the things that um, uh, uh, Elder uh, George Van Hook had me do, you see how that when we talk, when we reminisce on the uh, lectures and assignments that she given me, how they come back to play when we are going back over the uh, perception and direction examination. You see what I'm saying? Because see, it's just showing forth how the Holy Spirit is bringing all these things back to remembrance. You see what I'm saying? Whatsoever he have told me in the beginning. You see what I'm saying? And to show you, show you now that when we go back and we remember those lessons, you see what I'm saying? To where we can see the imprint you see what I'm saying, of the reality of what it's talking about. See, I mean, that's pictorially, you know, illustrated behind me. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's always, like I said, an honor and a, a, a pleasure and a privilege to to have either one of them. Because remember, um, um, Elder had this vision and revelation in 1989. You understand what I'm saying? All I did was wrote the, uh, put the flesh on the skeleton that she has already um, had. So this is why and related to when you hear um, Elder uh, uh, Joyce Van Hook on, on um, the call is that she had the same vision that I did. I just had it in 2002 of April of uh, 2002, which, you know, we just had an anniversary to the vision to make the vision and revelation behind me 19 years old. So it's been 19 That's years. Right. It's been 19 years since I had the vision. And then you do the uh, math on from 1989 to present since um, uh, Dr. Uh, um, Joyce Van Hook have had the vision of revelation uh, behind me. So, you know, we are two, we're two witnesses to uh, to what Yahweh Elohim had gave us 
we're at the same branch school and um, we come through the lineage of uh, Dr. Um, Josephine Bailey Gross and Uncle Bill Gross or Dr. Um, Dr. Bill Gross, which was the um, co-founder and president, um, Dr. Carl F. Gross's uh, son or grandson uh, is the lineage mm -hmm. that we came through of learning this teaching. So, that is so that's the, uh, you know, the lineage of, of how we received this teaching. And, um, you know, um, you know, I'm grateful that um, uh, I learned it from those elders, those partridges, uh, because mm -hmm. they were true uh, apostles um, around the creator when he had re-manifested himself um, in the body of uh, Dr. Henry Kirby Kemp. So uh, I yeah. do hope that you would enjoy the things that we talked about tonight um, mm -hmm. and seeing some of the things. Uh, we will probably go over some more of them again um, just so that uh, you know, we will make sure that some of the things that we are said that wasn't clear this evening will be clear uh, next time that we reconvene. And so therefore, oh, yeah. thank you very much for your time. And, um, you know, we'll see you on Wednesday night. My pleasure. Okay, thank you. And Shalom. Oh, good night. Bye.